So I hate re-uploads, but this is one of them. While intended for November, this video was originally uploaded on December 1st, 2017, and immediately it became one of my most popular uploads. But before even clicking the publish button, I realized that I had a copyright claim. Now what I should have done was taken the video down and changed the segment immediately. And I really decided that even if I wasn't going to be able to make money off of it, that I wanted to release the video as soon as possible. Despite this fact, I countered the claim, and that came around to bite me in the ass because the company officially filed a takedown notice as of today. So I decided to just take down the video, change the segment, and then re-upload it. The positive is that, in this case, I now officially own this video, and this is honestly just what I should have done from day one. Thank you for your understanding, and please enjoy. Hello, and welcome once again to B-Movie TV Juniors. In this episode, we discover counterfeits, bootlegs, knockoffs. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Until you come home and find out you've just spent $20 for this. Roll it! Hello everyone, and welcome to a special occasion that I like to call Knock Off November. For those of you who have found my channel more recently, Knock Off November is a special tradition that I started last year where I dedicated the whole month of November, and occasionally some of December, to reviewing knockoff merchandise and movies. Things like this. See, it looks like a Transformers toy, but it says something else. I've been holding onto this thing for months just to do this bit. And while we're certainly crunched for time, I thought it would be fun to sit down and look at at least one knockoff product before we move on to December. And what better place to start than the biggest oddity to modern animation? Yes, B-Movie. The 2007 cult... thing. B-Movie has always been one of those things that everyone knows about but no one wants to talk about. Like the slave labor that makes our clothing, or the fact that we let Megan Trainor have a musical career. I never clearly remember a time during my childhood where I chose to watch B-Movie, but I recall several instances where I would be spending time with my friends and it would just be playing in the background. No one knew who put it on, no one would even admit that they owned a copy of B-Movie, and yet there it was. I'm not sure that anyone really cared about B-Movie when it first came out, but it was so heavily advertised and promoted that it quickly became impossible for anyone to forget it either. So it sits in this weird part in the subconscious of our subculture, where it's known, but almost entirely for the perplexing circumstances of its own existence. B-Movie. A movie about a bee that falls in love with a human. The same movie where that bee and that human decide to work together to sue humanity for selling honey. The same movie that has a finale where the bee and the human have to land a plane with the assistance of a hive of bees so that they can pollinate the planet. That. B. Movie. I've been informed that while most adults are simply bemused by the existence of the Jerry Seinfeld comedy vehicle, a lot of children are very into B Movie. Kids love finding odd things to be infatuated with, so in that way it makes total sense that they would find the universe of the film exciting and very unique. What might disappoint them is how little output there is with B-Movie. No sequels, no spin-offs, nothing but one movie. Oh, and a game version. And a couple novelizations. And a ton of merchandise. Which includes honey. There is B-Movie Honey. B-Movie released their own honey. God is sitting in a recliner chair laughing at us every single day. In short, there's really only ever been one B-movie story ever told, even if it's been told several times over. And when you have plenty of little children wanting to see more of that world, you're bound to get the very thing that we've come to talk about today. Knockoffs. This is stealing! A lot of stealing! So in the past on this channel, we've discussed the infamous company Video Brincato, who have made themselves a staple of the knockoff market nearly as large as Asylum themselves. Even if you've never seen one of their films, you've most likely seen one pop up in a search where it didn't belong. And that very thing is how they have built their entire legacy. Now, my first video in the Knock Off November series was about a Video Brincato film, and it notoriously led to me receiving a copyright strike which was very hard to get rid of. There's obviously something quite ironic about a company whose main financial motivation is copying the intellectual property of other companies, filing a takedown against a copyright creator using their clips within fair use. And out of protest for this, I have decided to never get the language of their native country correct. Some Spanish people bust into my house and tell me, I can't own my own video, I ain't gonna respect their name. Or, 
or the actual language that they speak. But it was still quite shocking to see that Video Brinkato had not only made a knockoff of B-Movie, but that it had landed on Amazon Prime. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, if you have Amazon Prime, you're given free access to streaming this one movie for free. So start your free trial now and you'll get full access to this masterpiece. Or you can watch Curve Your Enthusiasm, it's your choice. B-Nard! B- B-Nard! B-Nard! I'm way over my fucking head. You shouldn't be buzzing around in the flowers. You're supposed to be a soldier someday. So this is our main character, Beanard, who is in trouble because he's collecting pollen from flowers when he's actually supposed to be training to be a soldier. You see, in the universe of Little Bee, Bee Society is split into the following branches. The Queen Bee, who bosses everyone around, Princesses, who train to be the new queen, and the Cooks, who gather nectar and then use it to cook honey. Now, in reality, the actual social structure of the average beehive is very different to this. Other than the queen, most fully functioning bees serve as workers with no unique categories. All worker bees are considered female in nature, and the only male bees serve only to impregnate the queen. They're often very crippled and actually die during the mating process, and I've lost you, haven't I? The point is that Beanar doesn't want to be a soldier because he wants to cook honey instead. His classmates ridicule him for this, as many of them are jealous at his position as a soldier. <laughs> That's absolutely right, Beauty. Our leading lady is indeed named Beauty, and her motivation is that she wants to be a soldier but is designated to always work in honey. Because of this, she flies down to the military target range after regular training to give her own go at the course, in a scene animated so awkwardly that you probably wouldn't believe that I haven't edited it. <laughs> This whole bit is so awkwardly put together and paced that it starts to feel like I'm watching someone else play a Telltale game. You don't want to get me into any trouble. Misfits like us need to stick together. Bum, ba, da, 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 ba, da. We're a couple. So Beanard blackmails B U T. So Beanard blackmails B U T into helping him get into the hive's kitchen so that he can make his own honey. The only obstacle in their way is the chef, who everyone seems to hate. The chef's main crime is that he's really bad at making honey, but seems to think that he's really good at it. So everyone hates him. Basically, he's an allegory for the people that made this movie. But B.U.T. puts up with dealing with the cook so that she and Beanard can make their own honey, pushing aside the futures that have been selected for them by the hive to make their own choices. Mind is in me, it's all up to me, what I want to be. Don't sing! I'm a but as Beanard and B.U.T. are finishing up their latest batch of honey, the hive is attacked by a human seeking to wipe it out. Two of the soldier bees find an opening in his bee suit, but this only causes the human to momentarily flee. In response to this, the queen declares war on humanity, and the pair have to split up to face certain death. Our will well, that's enough of that. While eavesdropping on the humans, the princess discovers that their jobs are to collect honey, and that they're planning to destroy this hive because the honey has been turning out so horrible. She confides this in the two main characters, and Beanard again plans to break rank so that he can help make a good batch of honey. And my honey has put the hive in jeopardy! That is terrible! There is only one thing I can do to right this wrong. How about a suicide pact? The humans approach the hive with a special gas that makes bees faint, which quickly makes mincemeat of the hive's well-trained militia. But the main characters are ready to release the honey and save the day. We need to pour the honey now. It's up to you. You're the only one who can fly fast enough to open the valve and make the honey flow out. Is he, though? Is being fast one of his character traits? 
Cause you didn't mention that before. Oh shit, I take it all back. Bernard's the fucking Flash. 99! And you could have it all. My empire of dirt. I will let you down. I will make you hurt. Wow, look at all that honey. I've never seen that much come out at once. That's not honey. This stuff is delicious. No way we're getting rid of this hive. And so Bernard saves the day, but that isn't the final act in our story, for Bernard is arrested and taken to no. I hope that you are aware, son, of the severity of the charges that have been brought against you. Your deposition is required. What is with movies about bees and scenes of bees in courtrooms? No one cares! After a 10 to 15 minute court scene, Beanard is acquitted and is declared the first bee soldier slash chef, causing much mayhem in the hive over what this will mean for the future. Do you think that I could be a princess one day? No. A princess who's a soldier too? No. What about a super chef princess soldier? characters in the movie know that the standard hasn't suddenly shifted. The rules aren't different, the society hasn't been uplifted. All that's happened is that one kid gets to pull a Mulan and break all the rules even though everyone else has to stick to them. And you know, if you want to call that a change in society, good. Go ahead and do it. But I don't, I don't really care. Uh, look at that. I think we're being watched. Oh, that's unsettling. You're right. Gosh, who is it? Hey, my name's Quinton. I get paid to watch bad movies. You're in one of them. I got it! This is someone who's following their heart wherever it takes them. Follow You're the person who's been making all these horrible choices? You stupid son of a bitch! Next movie. Plan B is the next animated feature in the discography of B-movie knockoffs, notable for actually being released the same year as the original. You might then suspect that it's a tiny bit rushed. Hey! Isn't that a- ah! It is no exaggeration to say that Plan B is the ugliest movie that I have ever seen. <laughs> when you compare it to something like Rhapsody Street Kids, which had this equal level of incompetence, Rhapsody Street Kids was nowhere near as hard to look at. One of the most horrifying design choices made is that in order to collect pollen, these huge red straws just eject from their throats. They use this not just to collect pollen, but they also vomit the pollen back up to make honey. I, I don't know if this is more or less accurate than any other B-movie's interpretation of what this is like, but it's definitely harder to watch. There is a plot to Plan B, but do you really need to know what it is? Would your life truly be negatively affected by not being told what happens in this movie? Because when I uploaded this video the first time and I didn't tell you what happened in the movie, everyone threw a hissy fit. The bees in the movie are having a dilemma where they haven't been able to grab as much pollen as they need to which apparently upsets the queen, who comes in screaming like a banshee. What's this? It's a uh, honey. I can see that! But there's so little! This queen apparently has replaced a former queen off-screen who we've not met yet, and she says that her first decree is that bees will no longer gather pollen by slowly going from one plant to the next, and that instead they will do it her way. Is it from now on? Drill and Drain. Huh? Wait, is this like an environmental film? Ever hear of Drill and Drain? Yeah, it sounds like some nutty technique humans invented. Okay, this is an, this is an environmental film now. Good. Oh, never mind. It's a political movie. Uh, there's this whole thing about how the old queen got replaced and they're trying to figure out why. Sure. The new queen insists on having more and more honey, and orders that the size of their hive be doubled in size to make more room. This leads to the main characters being informed that sleep privileges have been revoked, and that the bees will now have to work 24-7. This entire time, a bee from another hive is trying to convince the main character to leave his hive to come to hers instead. The film is set in Washington, D.C., potentially because these backgrounds are very cheap and the characters are constantly stopping to discuss the human history of America, entirely to draw parallels to the politics being shown in the plot of the actual movie. So you come here, to the Lincoln Memorial. 
a monument dedicated to Abraham Lincoln, the president who ended slavery. Desperate for nectar after they managed to destroy many of the plants in the DC area, the bees go to the only place that they haven't checked yet, the studio where this film was made. <laughs> Eventually, the main character B is banished after failing to produce enough honey, and finally meets his former queen. It's here that he realizes that the appointment of the new queen was actually a massive conspiracy, which leads him to appeal to his original hive's elders. The elders banished the original queen because they were served poisoned royal jelly, but the main character deduces that it was in fact the new queen who poisoned the elders, and blamed it on the older queen so that she could become queen. The new queen then declares martial law, and the other bees have to fight her guards, in the worst fight scene I have ever seen. I think each character has like four frames of animation, and it's dubbed like a porno. <laughs> The guards are defeated, and the fake queen is chased off by a horrifying, 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 horrifying toad. The old queen is restored, and she declares that flowers will no longer be drilled, and that they will all be allowed to sleep. Cool. Next movie. So this final one's a bit of a cheat, but it's become very well known as a knockoff, and it's honestly very interesting, so I think it's best to touch upon it. That being the peculiar existence of Maya the Bee. Now, you might have heard about this little franchise due to a controversy that took place earlier this year when it was discovered that someone had hidden phallic images in the middle of one of the episodes. It was quickly pulled from the digital shelves, and apologies were given to all. Boy, I really hope somebody got fired for that blunder. But believe it or not, Easter egg phallic images are not the darkest place that this little bee has traveled. Maya the Bee originally appeared as a German character who appeared in a novel released in 1912. It is quite easy to see that this makes it very unlikely to be a knockoff, given that the character predates the birth of Jerry Seinfeld by 42 years. The original Maya the Bee book has become controversial in recent years, due to Maya's insistence within the book to go on numerous racially motivated rants about how bees are superior to all other races. I'm not making that up. But her first on-screen appearance occurred in 1924, when she and her friends were portrayed by real insects in what can only be described as the original B-movie. That's good stuff. Maya fell into relative obscurity after this due to <coughs> various reasons, but she regained market significance somewhere around the mid-1970s, when she was the star of her own anime in Japan. Weird, right? I mean, how would the Japanese and the German people have any sort of connection to begin with? The most recent product to propel Maya into the spotlight has been the animated feature Maya the Bee Movie. Or as it should probably be said, Maya the Bee. Movie. It's hard to imagine that this specific designing of the title to only be one or two additional words away from the Jerry Seinfeld classic was done for any reason other than to grab the attention of people interested in B-Movie. However, if one does decide to see Maya the B-Movie as a knockoff, it's certainly one of the prettiest that I've ever seen. The difference between B-Movie and Maya the B-Movie is that B-Movie is very transfixed on the nitty-gritty details of the human world. And while Maya the B-Movie even barely suggests that the existence of humanity, and instead just explores a meadow through the eyes of a small bee. Because of this, Maya the B-Movie comes across as very innocent, and B-Movie comes across as heavily cynical. When you sit down and compare the different worlds created to represent the hives in each of these films, the version in Maya's also simply comes across as more intelligently crafted. The B-movie hive, filled with cars, miniature versions of human inventions, and overall a human aesthetic, just feels rather lazy. The kind of environment where they could just put in a McDonald's without it feeling out of place. But the hive in Maya the B-movie simply feels so open and unique. The kind of place that you would love to explore as much as Maya seems to. I'm not sure that I have a lot to say about this movie critically. First of all, it's clearly a movie meant for someone who's very, very young, and it simply seeks to teach children a few good lessons about understanding. But more importantly, unlike many of the other products that I tend to look at during Knock Off November, Maya the Bee Movie was not created with any malicious purpose or to spin a product off of something bigger. It was just meant to be kind of cute and innocent, and something you could put on for your toddlers without worrying about if it would scar them by accident. Really, I found watching this film just to be a relaxing experience. The kind of thing that I just needed to find peace at the end of my stressful week. Pretty good for a bee that used to be a Nazi, if you ask me. And with that, I've been quitting reviews, and that's all you be. 
that's all you need. I, I don't, that's just, that's all you need. Have a good day. I don't know where the hell that came from. Jesus Christ.